Hey, Viola Rolls Reacts here, and welcome to another blind commentary. Today I'm going to be reacting to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, Season 9, Episode 11, Student Council. So I guess they're going to add a student council, and yeah, student council is important because they're the ones who take student suggestions and give them to the faculty, as well as plan and put together student activities. So let's go ahead and see what this episode has in store for us. I know how hard you've been working lately. So I oh god, the episode is pitch shifted <gasps> up slightly. This looks amazing, but my job doesn't really seem like work. It doesn't? Oh, speaking of... Oh, what? <sighs> okay, interesting. They have call bracelets. I kind of feel bad for Trixie, actually, because she has nothing to do while Starlight's working. Sure. Being counselor for the students at Twilight School of Friendship is demanding, but... Yeah. Oh, one sec. <laughs> Being able to use the experiences of my checkered past to help young students feels pretty great. Oh, yum! Mm, thanks. Of course, I feel nothing but admiration for the work you do, but it is a little all-consuming, and I miss spending time with you. What are you talking about? We're spending time right now. Sort of. Um, yeah, exactly. Mm, hold on thought. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sorry. I cast a spell on the door to my office, so this bracelet goes off whenever there's a knock. Yona is having the worst time with her braids lately. Really? She went to the counselor anyway, for that? You were saying? <laughs> my little pony, my little pony. Oh, and I just now realize it's mirrored, too. I will mirror it for you guys so you guys see it and the way it's supposed to be. Also, if possible, if I can actually do the editing for it, I might pitch shift it down so that it sounds normal because I don't know. Does anybody else have a hard time watching pitch shifted episodes? I do a little bit. But this is the only one I can find on Dealing Motion. That's an actual full episode, so. Oh well. My younger cousins' decisions to stay sea ponies, but they've never been on dry land. Preparing for a visit with them is almost as much work as the research assignment Headmare Twilight gave me on hazardous fauna of the Whoa. Everglade Forest. How would you describe a shower to creatures who live in water? So far, I've got warm and steamy. Actually, steam has water in it. Silver stream. There are a lot of students who want to see me today. I just need a few shower adjectives that don't rely on the wet part. Huh. Well, there's clean, relaxing, um... Soap? Relaxing? I don't know. A nap's relaxing, too. Warm and clean are okay. Wow. I have to give this some more thought. Maybe just have them experience what a shower is well, like? I'm here to help. My door's always open. Except for today, of What? Course. Trixie? If we leave now, we can finish everything before sundown. Trixie, I can't leave. It's almost spring break. Twilight and Why don't you just wait for spring break? To celebrate the spring solstice in Canterlot, and I have to help the students with any issues before they head home for the holiday. I know you're busy, but I hope you haven't forgotten about the spring solstice. Spring solstice? What? The party Mod and Mudbriar are throwing. Ooh. Sunburst is coming to town. Ooh, she forgot. You and I promised to make the cake. <laughs> How oh, could I possibly wow. forget about that? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no pony is saying your job isn't important. The plans you make with your friends are important too. <sighs> I know. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have forgotten. Obviously, I need to be available to my students, but that doesn't mean I can't help with all the things we have to do. Good. Great. So I get the feeling that Trixie's gonna oh, take that bracelet and throw it somewhere do. by the end of this episode. Mod needs streamers for the decorations. Sunburst wants us to pick up a genuine pre-equestrian spring solstice chafing dish from the antique shop. Oh. Of course he does. <laughs> 
Mudflower wants a bouquet of flowering sticks, whatever that flowering means. Flowering sticks? And I thought we were both looking forward to Mrs. Cake teaching us the secret recipe to her famous spring solstice cake. Oh, I totally am. <laughs> but we could just buy a cake for no. her. No. Right? We could. But then we'd miss out on baking together. Plus the time I spent flattering and convincing and begging her to share the recipe would be for nothing. And we promised to make a cake, not buy a cake, and the great and powerful Trixie keeps our promises! Okay, why don't we just split up these jobs? I'll get the streamers and the chafing dish. You... No, no. Get started on those sticks and I'll be right back. I just hang on to this. Wouldn't want to forget the things I just said I'd take care of. Because I am totally gonna take care of them. Sure. <laughs> well, at least Did Trixie will... I have no idea. Mm. Oops. <sighs> Sorry, Rose, but I need a bouquet of flowering sticks set. I thought I was getting the flowering sticks. Yeah, you did say that. Uh, I'm still not exactly sure what they are. No one is. <laughs> Right, got it. You get the sticks, I'll get the streamers. Are they just sticks that are in the right, shape of flowers? Care of what I'm sure is an even smaller student problem than the last one. Huh. I think you should just prepare to... <laughs> I mean, that's probably close enough. I think I have the shower thing under control. Really, I silver string? how to describe a cowl. Smolder, I understand the school can be a bit drafty, but that doesn't mean you can breathe fire anywhere you want. Oh. What do you mean, Trixie already picked up Sunburst's genuine pre-equestrian Equinox chafing dish? That was my job! I think. Wait. Was it? Uh, who knows? Bacillus, it's perfectly normal for a changeling to struggle with identity issues, but don't for when you're done, I need some synonyms for the word dry, or really just help explaining the concept. When they come on to land, they'll be dry. Wait, Mrs. Cake! You can't close! Trixie and I need to learn the recipe for your Equinox cake! Trixie was already oh, here. My dear, Trixie was already here! I told her everything she needs to know. What? No! Oh, the great and powerful Trixie might keep her promises, but the busy and distracted Starlight sure doesn't. I promised to help her today, and I haven't done a single thing! Oh, that does sound hard, dear. A and I'm not quite sure how to tell you this, but your hope is glowing. Of course it is. Hmm. Oh, hi, Trixie. Mm. Trixie? What are you doing here? It's the one place I knew I could find you. I am so sorry about today. I'm just so busy. I know. Obviously, your students are more important than your friends. That's not... Starlight! Silverstream, not now. Actually, Silverstream, I don't. Besides, I need to lock up the school for the holiday, and it's time you caught the train home. I'm sure a smart and capable student like you can figure out the solution to any problem over the break. But for now, the counselor's office is closed. Hmm. So... Oh. I wonder what Silverstream wanted, because it seems like it wasn't related to the shower thing, or her cousins coming to visit. Yeah. Is this cake supposed to be so sharp? Just accept it. I mean, it looks really interesting. Technically, it's not symmetrical or aesthetically pleasing. Maybe it's not the best cake, but we made it together, and that's what counts. I'm glad you brought it, and everything else. I'm very excited. This is going to be the most perfect party ever. And with all of your students home for the holiday, I won't have to worry about you being summoned to your office in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Nothing is going to take me away from this party. Uh-huh, sure. Starlight? Who? Starlight? Oh, hello. Sorry, this is a private cavern. Is Starlight here? I was told she'd be uh -oh, here. Uh-oh, Silverstream didn't What's go home, wrong? did she? I'm 
Terramar, Silverstream's brother. I've been looking all over for you. Silverstream is missing! <laughs> Trixie just looks like she couldn't care. Even a little bit. I don't understand. Silverstream didn't come home? Mm -mm. I was supposed to meet her at the Mount Eris train station, but she never showed up. It's a long way between Ponyville and Mount Eris. She could be anywhere. Our parents are leading teams of hippogriffs and sea ponies, searching the land and sea between here and our home. They sent me to check the school. But the school's closed. All the students are gone. Are you sure? I know she had a big project due for Twilight. D do you think she might have stayed to finish it? She never told me about a project. Well, to that be was fair, the last thing she wanted to talk about. Really? Huh? What kind of counselor turns away a student with a problem? The kind with too much on her plate. Starlight has always gone out of her way for her students. And I mean always. Except apparently when it matters. This is all my fault! You all well, go back to the party. Technically, it's the Trixie's fault. You'll find your sister. I should have known it couldn't last. Party perfection is more of a pinky thing. <laughs> mm, I wasn't going to say anything. But these flowers are just glued on, so technically it wasn't perfect all. <laughs> but that's probably not important. <laughs> well, at least my Briar is getting a little bit better at reading other people's uh, feelings. That's a good idea. Hmm. Well, she's not here. No, she isn't. But look at this. A cockatrice? Could that be what her project was on? Oh, no. You don't think she went into the Everfree Forest to find a cockatrice by herself, do you? I don't know. That explains why she hasn't that. come back. I recommend getting Fluttershy for this problem. Oh, hello. Oh, what are you all doing here? We came to help. We couldn't let you handle this alone. Technically, she wasn't alone. <laughs> but we wanted to help anyway. Thanks. All of you. But the students are my responsibility. I'm the one who didn't do my job when it actually mattered. I might share a bit of the blame for pressuring you into leaving work early. Yeah. But I don't want to ruin your party. We can still have a party. A search party. <laughs> can we talk about all this later? Silverstream might be in the Everfree Forest alone. <gasps> we think she went in to do research on cockatrices. What? The gaze of the cockatrice is known to petrify any who dare to cross its path. And the reptilian birds are elusive and solitary. Where would we even start? I have a lot of experience telling ponies that I have experience with the dangerous creatures of Everfree Forest. Follow me! Okay. Oh. And they have to split up. The great and directionally astute Trixie says we go left. Didn't you just point right? Oh, right. The episode is mirrored. I forgot. This way. Mud Briar stopping to look at sticks along the way. Yeah, I was about to say, they're gonna start going in circles at some point. Yeah. Weren't we just here? Trixie, do you have any idea how to find a cockatrice? No. No. But usually, when there's a dangerous creature in the forest I don't want to meet, this is how I meet them. We might need a more concrete plan. Oh, suit yourself. Um, 
According to Silverstream's research, the cockatrice prefers rocky terrain and ample shade. Rocks and shade? Hmm. I can't imagine where we'll find that in a barn. <laughs> Actually, rocks aren't the most hospitable environment for shade trees. Technically, pine trees like Pinus Kembra or Pinus Sylvestris can grow from narrow crevasses or cracks in a rocky rhizosphere. You complete me. <laughs> There's some pine trees over there! Oh, wow. I thought you said they were solitary! They are! This must be some kind of migration. Oh, at least there's no sign of Silverstream. I can't imagine getting caught in the middle of that flock. It's just lucky we're all over here and they're all over there. Oh. Uh-oh. Technically, don't even say <laughs> whatever you do. Don't look at them. Their gaze can turn you to stone. So what do we do? Run! So, how are they going to get out of this one? Because I remember Fluttershy was the key to stopping Cockatrice last time, but there was only one. Smoke bomb, that was a good idea. <laughs> Mod, we've got to get out of here. I'm not leaving him. Oh no. Uh -oh. Mudbriar's been turned to stone? I didn't think I could love him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to get out of here. Wow. But we haven't found Silverstream. We can't also, is that a reference to the date they told us about when we, we were first introduced here. to Mudbriar? Um they went to a show where somebody turned stick into rock. Yeah, luckily they have to concentrate for their gaze to work, or unless the rules have changed. Oh yeah, I forgot about the crystal treehouse. Um, knock the bridge. Oh right, they didn't fly, so it doesn't even matter if you knock the bridge down. I mean, they can just fly Let's over. Hope Silverstream found a good place to hide. There could be hundreds more cockatrices on the way. If this really is a migration, it'll take a full lunar cycle to complete. Oh, I have to get word back to our parents that Silverstream could be surrounded by those terrifying birds. And as handsome as Mudbriar is now, we should probably catch one of them to turn him back to normal. Ugh, this is all my fault. I'm never taking time off from my counseling duties again. That seems a little extreme. Really? If I hadn't galloped off to a holiday celebration, Silverstream would be safe with her family, and you'd all be enjoying Mott's party. Instead, my student is missing, we're surrounded by a flock of petrifying chicken snakes, and Mott's boyfriend was turned into a hunk of rock! You got the hunk of right. <laughs> I love how Mott is just in love with my no hair even more now. Silverstream even came to Everfree at all, but I have no idea where else to look! Was been there. What? Really, you're oh, just now noticing? House. Apparently, it grew from the tree of harmony, and <gasps> of course, that should have been the first place we looked. Yeah, it should have been. Wait, she tamed one? This is Edith. She's helping me with my project. I don't understand. After you encouraged me to solve my own problem, I decided to get my project done before I left. That way I could really focus on my family during my visit. 
The school was closed, so I came here. Why didn't you tell anyone? Mom and Dad are worried sick. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. Once Edith volunteered to help, I guess I lost track of time. Cockatrices are really friendly if you know how to interact with them. Oh. I guess she learned that partially from Fluttershy's class. I can't believe you figured out how to trigger her nesting response. They are really fascinating creatures. Did you know that they migrate to the Eberfee Forest once a year? Can you imagine what would happen if you stumbled on a whole flock of these? Yeah, about that. I have a few ideas. Oh. I'm sorry you got turned to stone looking for me, but I'm glad Edith was able to turn you back. How do you tell the difference? <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> Technically, I will always be a stick pony. But the experience has given me an even deeper appreciation for the density and permanence of rock. Swoon. <laughs> she said swoon. <laughs> I wanted to thank you for everything you did to help find her. I just wish I hadn't abandoned her in the first place. Starlight, you didn't abandon her. I might as well have. And even though it turned out all right, things could have been a lot worse. You can't be expected to supervise your students every second of every day. I'm not so sure. I like that you're always available, but it kind of makes it okay to come to you with stuff that maybe isn't super important. Of course, being a school counselor is a big responsibility, but always being at work isn't fair to any pony, especially me. Do you think if I had set times to see me, it might help you decide what you really need to talk about? To be honest, you really weren't very helpful with the other stuff. <laughs> Dessert? You had me at petrified. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not entirely sure why the episode is called Student Council, except for the fact that Starlight is a counselor and she works with students. Um, but yeah, this was an interesting episode, and we got to learn a little bit more about the cockatrice uh, creatures that they migrate. And it was kind of cool to see that Silverstream had managed to befriend one of them for her project. I kind of would have liked to have seen how she did that, but oh well. Also, the jokes with uh, Maud being more attracted to Mudbriar after he got turned to stone was hilarious. And it was also nice seeing uh, Maud and Sunburst and Mudbriar again, and Trixie too, of course. Um... So yeah, usually faculty have set times for when they can see you during the week, so Starlight probably should have done that from the start, but it does seem within Starlight's personality to always want to help, especially with her trying to redeem herself from her uh, villainous days, because I get the feeling even though she's probably done more than enough to redeem herself with everyone, she still criticizes herself to some extent. That's sort of a theme that all of the reformed villains have in this show. But yeah, I really enjoyed this episode. If you guys did too, give this video a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter as well as support my Patreon and check out my reaction channel. All those links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. If you are subscribed or any subscriber right now, be sure to hit that bell icon so you're notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rolls Reacts, signing off. Talk to you later.